Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm your host, Scott Ramp. That was uh, Asaph Adonai on piano. I almost said Scott Ramp on piano. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Happy Friday, you guys, and this is the last show of Wake Up Missoula as we know it. You have a nice little Beatles to um, kick off uh, the end of Asaph and Noel, and uh, uh, we're mm -hmm. taking a week off next week, and then we'll be back with a brand new Wake Up Missoula, more of a roll and clip kind of show. Um, we'll do a whole bunch of new things, a whole bunch of fun things, and uh, you'll have to wait until uh, the last week in November and partially the first week in December to find out more. And it'll That's be just awesome. wonderful. But of course, it's cold outside and it's only going to get colder because basically it's in the teens and it's going to, oh, not really in the teens. Now it's, it's in the teens. The edge but of the it's, teens. it's basically the edge of the teens. And um, it's going to get a little bit warmer over the weekend. You know, it's going to be sunny today, so the heat will come in and then of course you have the freezing fog but of course through saturday and sunday it'll be fairly cloudy enough to have slight chances of rain showers and all that stuff hopefully the sun today will keep the heat in throughout the weekend but of course you'll still have a wet and snowy weekend happening to you guys but of course you can find out more information by going on to nationalweatherservice.gov but if you want to find out more information about wake up missoula you can log on to wake up missoula.wixsite.com slash wake up missoula you can also uh like us on our facebook page oh wow this uh latte is really <laughs> kicking in uh you can also uh, uh follow us at wake up missoula on our twitter page mcat also has a twitter page you guys can follow us at mcat tv missoula you can like us on our facebook page and to find out more information about us or catch us online live go to mcat.org yeah I'm, I'm definitely a latte person like really like annoying it's like i have like a latte with like 500 things that i have to do to it before it's perfect but anyways, we have a bunch of news items things. We do, happening. yeah. So up first, you guys. Um, I don't know if you've been hearing uh, the buzz about the generation of uh, there are a lot of fake news websites, and this one man named Paul Horner is a 39-year-old self-made titan of a fake news empire on Facebook, <laughs> and he is claiming responsibility for for pushing Donald Trump to the White House, and says he has no plans to stop publishing fake news. Um, and so he attributed his success to Trump's particular base of supporters because his supporters believe anything and they don't fact check anything. He has such viral head headlines as the Amish in America commit their vote to Donald Trump and President Obama signs executive order banning the national anthem at all sporting events nationwide. Uh, also, Donald Trump's campaign manager posted one of Horner's, Horner's stories about a protester getting paid $3,500 as a fact. He made that up and put on a fake Craigslist ad and also, his fake news articles are published on sites designed to mimic the look and feel of well-known legitimate news outlets. Um, uh, this had enormous impact on the election cycle. Even members of Donald Trump's inner circle, including his son and campaign manager, shared links to Horner's content, which were all fake news sites. <laughs> um, they also made their way to Google News, which is known to feature stories from reputable news sources. So, and then in a new analysis from the last three months of campaign coverage, BuzzFeed News, conclu BuzzFeed News concluded that top fake election news stories generated more engagement on Facebook than top election stories from 19 major outlets combined. Wow. So, a lot of the news people were reading was very fake and untrue. And so, if you guys... And the one thing that BuzzFeed definitely knows how to do is clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They're great. So, if you guys want to find out a list of the fake news websites, you can go to the Daily dot dot com and uh you guys can see it up here and so this is a whole list of fake news websites that people have been clicking on and going on and getting their news from that and none of it is true oh infowars nice so definitely be careful and fact check all the news that you guys see and read and hear and don't just trust one thing <laughs> There's because a lot of those websites that uh, I've seen a lot of our producers here at MCAT like constantly look at. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's all fake. It's all completely fake. Yeah. So be sure to chat, fact check everyone. Our next website, our next news story <laughs> is from uh, another website. Next news story is from CBS. The first one I got from CBS News as well. So this next one, this is really scary. So scientists are warning of a new earthquake danger in Northern California. Mm -hmm. They've discovered that two fault lines, Hayward Fault Line and Rogers Creek Fault, meet in the shallow waters of San Pablo Bay near San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So that means it's 118 miles of fault line. 
and the larger the fault, the more intense of an earthquake it can produce. They've discovered, uh, USGS ge geophysicists have discovered that it could go up to a 7.4 magnitude. <coughs> and so, um, I believe that it was Thursday, uh, 1,200 emergency responders took part in an earthquake drill, and hundreds of scientists, engineers, and politicians will gather today in LA to discuss what to do with the next big earthquake. As they say, it would create more of an impact as and loss than Hurricane Katrina did. Wow. Yeah, and so um, the, last San the last earthquake, so in 1906, San Francisco had an earthquake that leveled entire neighborhoods, killing thousands of people. And in 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake killed 63 people and caused 60, $6 billion in damages. <coughs> so there are seven, around 7 million people that live around uh, San Francisco. And co so if there's a uh, magnitude earthquake that could reach up to 7.4, uh, that's pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, pre it's pretty freaky. Because mm -hmm. an earthquake is measured by each number that they go up is basically 10 times as powerful as the previous one. Yep. And the, the, you can't really measure for an earthquake. I mean, they, they measure it after it's happening or while it's happening, but they don't really actually know when it's going to happen. It's but true. if it's California, it's like it's like the weather. It's like, oh, there's going to be an earthquake it's true. happening. And so the longer the fault line, the yeah, the worse the earthquake could be. And so they thought that they were just two separate fault lines, and they've discovered that they are two separate fault lines, but they now meet. Yeah. And so I like, be careful. If you ask a Californian in California when the earthquake's going to happen, they'd be like, uh, just wait five minutes. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like snow. That, that's like us here. It's like, oh, weather. wait five minutes to change the weather. They just say, wait five minutes for an earthquake. It's true. <laughs> and then my last story I got from KTR, KRTV, and uh, this is another story kind of about the Earth's uh, natural... You know, you just shouldn't mess with the Earth sometimes when there are signs posted. Okay, so, a 23-year-old Oregon man essentially dissolved inside a hot spring at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming after he accidentally fell in it. Oh, yeah. So this was happened in June, and this man and his sister went to the park to find a place to hot pot. And I guess hot potting is going into geothermal places and then getting in there to soak kind of like a, like a hot springs. Um... And so they went to an unauthorized area near the Norris Geyser. There were signs posted, and they went off the trail and off of the boardwalk. And you know that's getting into well. Mm, yeah. And so um, Scott had reached, or Scott, the brother had yes. reached down to, his last name is Scott. The brother had reached down to check the temperature of a spring when he slipped and fell in. So they later found his body inside the pool, but couldn't retrieve it because of a lightning storm in the area. So they came back the next day, but no remains were found because yeah. the spring had basically dissolved them. And so this park's geysers or springs are, and are acidic because they are fed by thermal water deep underground that picks up sulfuric acid as it rises to the surface. <laughs> the sulfuric acid is produced by microorganisms that break down hydrogen sulfide in rocks and soil. Wow. So, um, rocks. And then the brother, the kid's sister was recording on her cell phone when he fell in. I guess it's a 12 minute long video of him falling in as well as her attempts to rescue him. But the park service won't release the video, which naturally I can imagine that is very, yeah. very traumatizing. So pay attention to signs. You know, the earth is a force that you should not mess with. And just pay attention to the signs. So that's what I've got you guys for you guys for news. I found my first two stories from CBS and my last story from KRTV. Wow. Like, there's never a happy ending when people go off the beaten trail. Like I say... If you leave off the beaten trail of Bob Marshall, you dead. You dead. You, you're going to die. And the same thing happens, like, everywhere. It's like, you know, um, Glacier National Park, they had that murder not too long ago, but it was, like, the first murder ever. But the yeah, only time they've had people it, die. Yeah, pushed her husband off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be, like, a Lifetime movie or whatever. Yeah, it is. I'm sure I'm it'll be a Lifetime movie. It's like, yeah. murder in the National Park. <laughs> <laughs> the, the blah, blah, blah story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was already on 60 Minutes or whatever. It probably, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, she it's like, it's... It's whatever. It's like any of those like uh, relationships, you know, like where they end up in, like in murder. People are like obsessed with it. It's ridiculous. Obsessed. Like, it's look really at me. Weird. I'm even talking about it right now. Calm down, Scott. Whew. Okay, so um, <laughs> before the slot day starts fading out, uh, we have a bunch of uh, events that are coming up that uh, that no one's going to talk about for the weekend. But of course, mm -hmm. we have a bunch of new programming as well, which um, consists of. A couple of my programs that I filmed and I've edited myself. One is the Safe Kids Fair that happened a month or so ago and basically teaches kids about safety and how to uh, be safe inside your house. 
Um, I, I have the season finale of Look Before You Speak, which is an art show hosted by Steve Glukert, but, but produced by yours truly. And uh, then we have a whole bunch of other Megs as well, but I don't want to get into it because <laughs> y- you'll see all the teases right after this. And when we come back, we'll have Noel with your events. Recognize things in, in, in a house that might be unsafe. You know, whether it's combustibles too close to a stove, um, matches that are not where they're supposed to be, you know, just general safety things, even including, you know, keeping pathways clear. Um, well, I think I could just talk a little bit about why we do mass making um, at Living Art. We started doing it in a program called Cancer, Courage, and Creativity, and we offer that twice a year. Our next session's coming up in March. Um, the mass making technique is valuable for several reasons. First of all, people learn the process of mass making. So learning a new technique, a new process is just something fun. We're not just about creating affordable housing and selling it and maybe restricting it. So We're about stewarding that housing. So, so the organization puts time and effort into making sure that it knows what's going on with the houses and dealing with problems before they they become too severe so someone's struggling yes. these these snails were very large oh my God. and we always thought what can we do with these um, in ecuador they have very small napkins and so we tried to make this like on the table as a little napkin holder with them fold in half but uh anyway never really took off either we also did a lot of work with bamboo and in bamboo we had um, a big learning curve as well so these were our first bamboo attempts. We speak for him such a reception at the hands of his countrymen as we show the world that whilst the parliamentarians are pandering to the English king and his garrison in Ireland and striving to sing still, still further the idealism of our people that the heart of nationalist Ireland is still warm, still throbbing in the desire for freedom and with the determination to attain it and to honour those who with them desire it and work for it. Now that's um, not quite what London and Rasa and a Jerry by Pierce was more later on. But it's a sign that you know, things are moving and they were. That's why he was there. Hi you guys, we are back and I've got some events going on in your Friday. So what I have for today is lots of children's activities and then we have a couple art classes in the afternoon. And then uh, music for the parents in the evening. So starting at 9.30 a.m. over at Mismo Gymnastics is family fun time. At 10.30 at Missoula Public Library, it's Tiny Tales. This is for birth through 36 months, which is three years. They sing songs, they hear stories, they learn finger plays, as well as hear nursery rhymes. Family story time is for a bit of an older crowd. It's at 10.30, also at the Missoula Public Library. Uh, They hear a story time, and then they have songs and an art activity. Preschool playgroup is at Ruth Zachary Sports Center at 11. This is for ages walking to five years. Uh, they set up different activities and stations around the gym, and parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. And then at the Children's Museum of Missoula, they have a spaghetti rainbow touch. It's, so it starts at 11, and what it is is that it's cooked spaghetti, and then they have different um, food colorings. So it's like rainbow spaghetti, and then the kids can play with it and touch it. It's kind of like a sensory activity. It sounds really gross, but fun. Yeah, I'd like that if I was a kid. At Taste Buds Kitchen, they've got Turkey Cupcakes Workshop for ages two to six, it starts at 11. It's at $20 with one caregiver included. And then at the University of Montana, we've got a discussion. It's called Creating Inclusive Communities. It starts at noon. And it's a discussion on how to create a more accepting community for people of all backgrounds and lifestyles. And it's from noon to two at the Payne Family Center in room 201 at the University of Montana. Yarns is at the Missoula Public Library starting at noon. You can bring your knitting or crocheting project and eat your lunch and, you know, craft and gossip. And then we have a watercolor painting class at the Public Library also at noon. Oh, this is for ages 18 and up. It's at 2 o'clock. And then there's a discussion at the Public Library at 3.30. This will be in the large meeting room. And it's called the Doctrine of Discovery. So the between the mid-15th century and the mid-20th century, the Doctrine of Discovery allowed European entities to seize lands inhabited by indigenous peoples under the guise of discovery. So in 1792, the U.S. Secretary of State, Thomas and Jeff. Thomas Jefferson declared that the doctrine of discovery would extend from Europe to the infant U.S. government. 
So uh, they're having a, a discussion about the effects the document has had on Native people since the landing of Columbus, as well as exploring the root causes of historical trauma and the resulting need for resilience in the Native American culture. At the public library, they have a teen writers group that starts at 3.30. Also at 3.30, over at the family uh, YMCA, they've got family fun time. They have nice comfy chairs for parents, and then children get to do uh, all sorts of activities. Some activities include bounce houses, scoop ball, tumbling area, bucket stilts, scooterville, and much more. And then we have spider feeding at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium at 4 o'clock. They feed Rosie the Chilean rosehair tarantula. And then up next at the Zootown Arts Community Center is a holiday open house. It starts at 5.30. So what it is, is pretty much anyone open for anyone that's interested in the Zootown Arts Community Center. And they've got um, food, libations, music, and of course art. And you can meet their staff and learn about their new classes. At the Southgate Mall is a Mama Load launch party. Mama Load is a magazine for parents. Uh, starting at 6 o'clock, they're going to have Santa for the children. And then they're going to be launching their new print edition called Time. Irish Music Session is at the Union Club at 6 o'clock. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is a Creating Upcycled Ornaments class for the whole family. Also starts at 6 o'clock and it's $19 and it's from 6 to 7.30 and they'll be using, reusing magazines, posters, bags, and paper clips to create unique holiday ornaments. At the Public Library, we've got a cheap date night starting at 7 o'clock. At 7.30 at the Glacier Ice Rink is Missoula Junior Bruins home game versus the Bozeman Ice Dog. Um, so it's $10, $10 for adults and then it's $5 for military, senior, and kids from 5 to 17. The University of Montana in the University Center Ballroom, they've got a When Jazz Was King, uh, like a concert and dance. So what it is, it's a celebration of the history of jazz. Um, there, let's see, it's got a no host bar at 6.30, a dinner at 7.30, UM Jazz Ensemble at 8.30, um, and then more music and dancing into the evening. Yeah. At the Sunrise Saloon, Melissa Ferretti, Shane Klaus, and Country Line will be playing starting at 8.30. And then at Monks, they've got a FTC dance party starting at 9 o'clock. It's eight, $5 for ages 18, $21 for, uh, $0 for age 21 and up. And then the Palace has got uh, the go-to beds starting at 9 o'clock, as well as the Sasha Bell Band, and the Sasha Bell Band is from Missoula. And then at the VFW, they've got a bunch of different bands that are all, have all different variety of music. So starting at 9 o'clock, they've got Tiny Plastic Stars, Codependence, and Rock Gut Wines, as well as Rude Max. It's, 21, it's $3 for 21 and up, and then $6 for ages 18 and up. Then my last musical event for your Friday night is going to be Mudslide Charlie's playing at the Union Club at 9.30. So that's what I have for your events for Friday. Up next, we've got Musical Notes with ASAP at 09. Well, first I wanted to thank both of you again for this opportunity doing all these musical notes stories, especially you, Noel, because it was your idea. I want the TV audience to know. Yeah, of course. And when we do our this quick chronological history here, I first met you guys on this show on August 4th, 2014, when I first appeared. Nice. And then in February 25th of 2015, that's when you guys invited me to do the musical notes. And the very first story I ever did on that day was on big band music and bebop jazz. Nice. And it was kind of primitive until it kind of evolved. And then I've done like stories like um, the Three Stooges, you know, remember when we had the Stooges Day? Mm -hmm. And I did Mo, Curly, and Shemp. I think it was, yeah, if I remember that correctly. Each, you know, for that whole entire week. And I did stories like Flipper. I did stories like, um, ooh. Dick Clark, you remember that one with mm -hmm. the, the $10,000 pyramid? And just hundreds of other stories. But of all those hundreds of stories, I picked five of my favorite stories. I'm gonna save the, my personal favorite for last. So we'll start, known to the world as Steve McQueen. This is the first one, and this is a scene from his movie that made him famous, The Blob. <laughs> I don't even think people remember this film, but it became a cult classic. In the next picture, this is when he plays Josh Randall, the lightning fast bounty hunter. He goes to the West. You remember I told that story? Mm -hmm. uh, tracking bad guys, and he takes half his proceeds and gives to charity. And the name of this series is called Wanted Dead or Alive. And what do you like about Steve McQueen? Well, he's known as the King of Cool. 
He still has that reputation to this day. You can just look at that look. And remember when we were able to show the videos and he took on that guy when he was following that lady and stuff? He just always had that cool look and he still has that to this day even though he's been gone for a long time. And the, another, the next story, one of my favorites, Secret Squirrel. And this is Hanna-Barbera cartoon I used to watch when I was a little boy growing up. It's a kind of a take on James Bond. Uh, Secret Squirrel can do all these tricks like with his hat, like Inspector Gadget, you know, he just has all the little tricks and stuff. And um, Yellow Pinky is the bad guy that's based on Goldfinger from the James Bond. And the little guy Morocco Mo, that's based on Peter Lorre from the 1940 Mr. Moto series. And he's the one that always gets out of character talking to the audience when he's driving hunked up under the car but he can still see <laughs> and then our next video our pictures remember diana rigg from the original avenger she played mrs emma pill the judo lady <laughs> that beats up all the bad guys and like when she took on that guy in the swimming pool and kicked him and he falls backwards and uh the other the the the, the most funniest scene was that scene with a guy with a mask that was prowling around in the office and she goes in there she dives over the table and takes yeah. him off. Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. But she played the original Mrs. Emma Pill in the Avengers and then when they did the remake, Uma Thurman was the actress. Next we have Sally Field, of course, and she made my number one for 2015, the top 10. And of course, there she is from the past playing the flying nun. Remember she flew through the church window? And I think that was my favorite, the flying yeah, nun. I, uh, I could not get over it. That was so funny. And walking the dog, and she, and she start floating while walking the dog and stuff like that. <laughs> but the younger generation will remember her, obviously, Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm -hmm. But in my generation, it was the flying nun. And finally, my personal favorite story of all the musical notes with ASAP I've ever done and I think some of your TV audience might agree with me, and then some might have their personal favorites. But this is the actor Mark Goddard. Um, he's the lightning fast deputy sheriff that took on those two guys in the cave. You remember that? <laughs> and I did that song. <laughs> so he, he, his character was Cully, and the name of the series was called Johnny Ringo. And he also got his first Hollywood job three weeks after moving to Hollywood, and of course he'll, he went on to play Lost in Space Major Don West, the pilot of Jupiter 2, and I told you how Dr. Zachary Smith sneaked on the Jupiter 2 to try to sabotage the mission when their mission was to go to Alpha Centauri and colonize the planet, and uh, he's, he's their pilot, so he'll always be remembered as Major Don West. There's the robot, and there's Judy, of course, and I also shared how he got his degree after doing his movie career. Mm -hmm. So if Mark Goddard ever sees this, he'll know that he's my personal favorite story of all the musical notes with ASAP I've done. And I will quit on that note and say that phrase for the last time. Cool. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much, ASAP. These stories yeah. have been very enjoyable and I've definitely enjoyed them all throughout the Well, what's fun years. about them is um, with me being older, I can go back in the yeah. past uh -huh. and bring some of these people back to life. Yeah. So hopefully your audience can look up any musical note, um, wake up Mozilla musical notes and have fun with it. Nice, yep. thank you very much, sure. Asa. And of course, if you want to see Ace of Hatter and I, he'll be playing at the mall, yeah. starting on the next day after Friday. Thanksgiving, yeah, and he'll be Friday. pretty much be playing every, every single, single day, day yeah, through the holidays. All day. Not to yeah. mention, you'll be playing at Paddy Creek Market? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, probably on Saturdays now, because cool. I won't have time to do both of them. Cool. So and you can then, check it out. Uh, he'll be all there every, pretty much every single weekday. Yeah, and then of course, Patty Creek Market on it. Saturdays. And then ASAF also has his own show named ASAF Cafe. And ASAF, yeah. when does that air? That airs uh, Thursday at 5 p.m. and then Friday at 8:30 p.m. Awesome. So you guys could still get your dose of ASAF. Yeah, yes. and uh, ASAP, uh, I remember when I gave you that idea the other day where you'd, you'd just do your own show about musical notes with ASAP? Oh yeah, I chose sure. Scott I'll uh, toy with that idea after the holiday yeah. and give me some time to process it. Or you could day. even do like, it, add it to the end of ASAP Cafe. Yeah, I would, yeah I'll yeah, i give that some thought. Yeah. Yeah. Nice idea. little rolling clip yeah. if you want to take a break between ASAP. Well, no, you didn't even need to take a break between ASAP Cafe. Well, I, I'm, I'm something like 
oh gosh, what, 20 shows ahead? Yeah, you so. have like an entire <laughs> season ahead. Yeah. yeah, I could be gone for a little while. I think you can, um, for the holidays at least, right? Yeah. But you guys have made this a delight for me. I mean, I don't have a journalism degree like both of you do, but this has just been a delight doing these stories. It's been fun. Well, neither of us have classical piano and in another thing either, too, so. you notice, if your TV audience noticed, Every story I did, I didn't get into their personal lives like mm -hmm. so many other people do in those other shows. I just wanted to focus on the accomplishments and the contributions and make it fun. That's what makes it so lighthearted and great and enjoyable. Yeah, that was what I wanted to do. I agree. I love that, Asa. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, uh, now we have an art clip. Yes, and it is the... Uh, Courtney Blazon. Courtney at Blazon. At the Missoula Art Museum. This is A Year Without a Summer. Yep, and you'll be able to see this until the end of December. So check it out before it's gone. Hi, you guys, we are back, and I've got events for your Saturday. So, up first, we've got our Sentinel Craft Show and Fair at Sentinel High School starting at 9 a.m. And then also at 9 a.m., over at Stage 112, which is the Elks Lodge off of Patty Creek, um, off of Patty Street, they have got their uh, Saturday Winter Market. So, starting from, I believe, maybe it's 8, I think it's from 9 to 2, or maybe it's 8 to 1, but we've got our Saturday Market going on if you guys want to check that out off of Patty. And then at the Missoula Public Library, we've got International Games Day starting at 10 a.m. Um, and so over a thousand libraries worldwide are hosting International Games Day. So Missoulians of all ages can play with Wii, Wii U, Xbox 360, or PS3 gaming systems, board games, and card games. Uh, that goes in the large meeting room from 10 to 4. And then over at the Living Art of Montana, they've got a Saturday workshop, a 3D holiday cut cards. It starts at 10.30 a.m. No experience is necessary, and this is offered free, adults to age, offered free of charge to adults 18 and older dealing with illness or loss. The Learning Center at Red Willow has a family art class starting at 11. Um, Pre-registration is required, so if you guys want to sign up for that, you can go to call 721 zero zero three three and that'll be from 11 to 1 at the learning center at red willow it is a family art class and then at the missoula butterfly house they're making pollinator thank you cards starting at noon so in honor of thanksgiving they're making thank you cards to tell pollinators how thankful they are for them at E3 Convergence Gallery, they've got a Saturday watercoloring class with Bobby Almer that starts at 1 o'clock. It's $25 if you bring your own supplies, but it's an additional 5 bucks if you need supplies. At Shakespeare and Company, Dr. Ian Ling is going to be talking about volcanoes, what's hot and what's not. Um, so he'll be reading from his in-depth survey of volcanism, Volcan volcanism, is that how you say it? I don't know. So volcanoes um, and our solar system. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got origami crane folding demonstration at 115. It'll be downstairs in, in front of the large display case. And then at the University of Montana, in the Payne Family Center in the Rotunda, starting at 2 o'clock, is Turning the Wheel Family Romp. And so what it is, is a guided creative movement play for all abilities and ages um, by using improvisational games set to music. 
and they'll guide you to creativity, joy, awareness, and play. That sounds like a great time. And finally, something for adults. At the Missoula Art Museum, they've got open figure drawing starting at 3 o'clock on Saturday. Participants must be ages 18 and older. And it's uh, $10 for non-members and $8 for members. It's through 3 to 5. And then at the Missoula Public Library, we've got National Novel Writing Month starting at 3.30. So it's a marathon writing event that challenges participants to write the first draft of a 50,000 word novel during the month of November. So libraries are across the United States are doing this. There are local chapters in more than 600 re regions around the world. Okay. And they organize in-person workshops and write-ins throughout the month. So you can drop by the boardroom from 3 to 6 to participate in a write-in and build up your work count. And now, we've got music at breweries and a few of the bars to enjoy for our Saturday evening. So Jeff Lake will be at the Missoula Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. Andrea Harsell will be at Draftworks at 6 o'clock. Old Sap will be at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. Salsa 406 will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 8.30. And Salsa 406 is actually a salsa band. So you can dance to that. Salsa and not country. Absolutely with Chris Moon will be at the Badlander at 9 o'clock. Showdown will be at the... Okay, so... Showdown probably won't be at the Sunrise Saloon since Salsa 406 is going to be there. But they might be. Who knows? Uh, Rest NASA and the Revelators will be at the Union Club at 9.30. And then Calyx will be at the VFW at 10 and they're a punk band from Pittsburgh. So you guys, as always, that's uh, what I've got for you. Check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, The Independent or The Missoulian. If you guys want to find out more events or even want to look back at events since I won't be here anymore, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. That's usually where I I get all of my information from and they have it color coded so they've got it color coded by education and uh, art and music and uh, sports so it's a pretty fun and friendly website to use for to fund your events hey guys we got a lot left in the show so stay with us um, we have an episode of teen talk coming right at you happening right about uh, in a second <laughs> now I'm Neil Wells and this is Teen Talk. Today on Teen Talk, neo-Nazi groups in Missoula, also internet prank culture. So let's start with the neo-Nazi groups. Um, Jack, what would you like to say about them? I think it's very stupid in, in their beliefs as like being a Jewish man is like being a white guy better than being Jewish. It's just that they're, they're, I wish they knew what is right and what is wrong in this world, and they just come in, and I think they're gonna, they're putting a bad name in, like, maybe, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm worried that they're gonna put a bad name in Missoula, because Missoula is an awesome town, but yeah. these guys are just handing out flyers to join the neo-Nazi group, so I hate that, and yeah. yeah. Jackson, why do you think they chose Missoula? That is a very good question. Why, why, why did you? Why did you? I know you're watching. <laughs> why did you? Ellen, do you want to answer that? That question of uh, why do you think they uh, just chose uh, uh, Missoula? Hard to say. I've never, um, I've, I don't know much about this group, to be honest. Um, I can tell we just talked about it earlier today. But um, I, think that, I think it's like a really liberal town. I, I was like, according to the election, this is like the only county that voted liberal. And um, I think that they know it's liberal and they, they, they'll be against it. So they're going to try to, con they think that... A liberal town is a good place to convert people. 
I think, whether it's true or not. So, Liam, how do you think this will f affect Missoula? Uh, it'll put, it'll be negative for sure. Well, I mean, considering I just found out about this, like, a couple minutes ago, I don't really know much about it, but it sounds like it's gonna have, make a bad reputation for the for the town, mm -hmm. or at least some of it, but mm -hmm. I must have missed something while I was in Florida, because I uh, didn't know about this. Yeah, because that's because it happened, like, over the weekend. What? Yeah, they're Clearly, I don't pay attention to the news that much. I don't much. pay attention to the news either. I just have Swanson as a teacher. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So, next topic. Prank culture on the internet. Mm. Specifically mm. YouTube. Oh, no. Look like you've got something to say about it, Jack. I got so much stuff to say about this freaking pink <laughs> prank culture. I think these guys who set up the pranks and everything, they just like, it gets into their head that this is a good thing to do. Cause there was this guy, uh, he has the last uh, name of like lettuce or something. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, it's a real dude. Um, but he said, he just, he was talking about how it's, he was talking about Black Lives Matter, and he was so racist about it. He, he was like, um, he was, so setting up these people, okay, so he had a black, black Lives Matter sign, and then like, there were all these horrible responses, and he was trying to say that like, it was horrible, but he was trying to say that, like, black people are negative or something. And he was talking about, he was just, he was so racist and just, in, he, he, it got into his mind like this was a good thing. Hmm. And to show the people that, oh, this what? is, I don't know, he was so. just, Sending a horrible message, yes. W was being like... Joey Salads, that's... Joey Salads, yeah. Was being... That wasn't what I was gonna ask, oh. but it was like being racist the joke? Yeah, well, no, it wasn't the joke. He was or actually was trying... Just, or was it just kind of part of the joke? It, he it wasn't... Well, he was pranking. He... Okay, so there's... He had a Black Lives Matter sign. Um, uh, just he was in front of a grocery store. And these people, so a white male, walked in front and said, hey, white lives matter as well. Wow. So, mm -hmm. but, like, I don't know. It's just so, all right. Huh. It, it was... We're going to have to move on to another speaker. Sorry to cut you off, Jack. No, no, no that's fine. <laughs> Ellen, what do you think of uh, the criticism that uh, a lot of pranksters on YouTube don't actually... Uh, do pranks, but rather are just. You know, I just think it's not necessary. Like the whole like go kill yourself or go f yourself, stuff like things like that. I really don't like that. I don't like to see it on the internet at all. And um, I don't really watch prank videos, but like well, I, I kind of do sometimes. But it's like people pranking people they know. So like Nikki and John is one that I like to watch, and they're like a couple who prank each other in Los Angeles and stuff with like different hot sauces and stuff. And the other one is um, from the Vines, like Thomas Sanders, like the Disney pranks with friends thing. I like to watch that, but other than that, it's just videos, like music videos, so. Yeah. And since we're running low on time, we're gonna move on to you and then Liam. Okay, well, um, I think that prank videos are okay as long as they don't take it too far. Yeah. Even though I don't really watch a lot of them either. I usually only watch them if they like have that clickbait, <laughs> you know, title. Don't exactly. click on clickbait stuff. You can't do it myself. Liam, don't, don't try to control me. <laughs> um, no, that's a clickbait. That's yeah, control. but then I think, I think it's kind of stupid that also if they like set up the pranks and they have like actors 
Like, so they just, I mean, like, I, I, I know that some people, yes, Jack? Uh, that's what Jerry Salins did. He was just caught, uh, and there's this guy videotaping him. Like, go on, yes. Ah. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, Sorry. But the, yeah, just, that if they just have actors, and if they take it too far, then I don't think it's okay. I mean, not that actors aren't okay, it just defeats the whole purpose of the prank. Yeah, exactly. yeah they say prank. Julian? Well, on YouTube, I've seen a lot of prank videos, and like Ellen said, people pranking people they know is usually all right, but public pranks, in a lot of people's opinions, are more entertaining, so I like to watch like friendly public pranks that, yeah, that's... that like make people happy in the end. Not like you just jump scare them or something. Like kissing prank. Or no those. way. Those no kissing, the kissing way. pranks are kind of stupid. Those are yeah. all fake. Those are like the most like ones you're pretty sure have actors in them. Yeah, those are all fake. They get into it I'm so planning much. a prank on the school physical training. Okay, no. What? There's a kid. I should become a prank. All right, Shut up, mother. Looks all like right, guys. we've run out of time. <laughs> I'm Neil Wells, and this is Teen Talk. <laughs> hey, guys. Let's talk about some city council stuff already. Why don't you? All right, so the uh, in Public Works, uh, Epo Echo Compost is getting a new owner, the city of Missoula. Um, many speculate that the fees will go up, and they will. But, of course, gradually. And One Way Public Works Director John Wilson is com um, combating the uh, higher uh, fees for the Echo Compost is this. Consensus will be that we will staff the shack there uh, whenever it's open uh, to deliver materials, which we intend to do five days a week. Uh, it'll be have a person in there to take fees and to monitor what's being brought in. We're also looking at operating hours that we keep it open, like say from uh, 10 to 7 or 9 to 6, something so people would have a chance to bring things in after work. So is it going to... I think right now it's open on the weekends too, Saturday and Sunday. I, I believe is, it is. They is generally that... just leave the gate wide open and nobody's there. Well, you, <laughs> recently nobody's been there. Usually somebody's there. Um, but we're going to cut back on hours when it switches over? Um, we don't think it makes sense to pay somebody overtime to be in there, just the staff at seven days a week. So we're thinking of like uh, uh, Wednesday through Sunday, you know, make it, make it available the weekend. But... Uh, uh, you know, find out what works best. But we think it's more efficient to uh, not staff it seven days a week. And we think it's important to staff it. So I think it definitely would have to be open every day during the week. Um, just because I know that, <laughs> just because I have the tree company husband, um, they go at least once a day during the work week. Um, sometimes multiple times a day. So if they couldn't drop off loads half the week, that would really put a. I mean damper on lawn service companies, tree companies. Well, um, you know, it's the sort of thing we can adjust very easily. So as we're working with the companies and we hear, you know, maybe we can do something like uh, two half days or not Sunday and two half days, but, you know, we'll work with people and find something that works. If we have to staff it seven days a week, we may need to increase fees a little bit. Yep. So that was basically the explanation on if they are going to increase the fees, they basically have to run the operation the same way it was run before the city of Missoula acquired Echo Compost. So basically, um, it, it's like when the city acquires something, a lot of times there's always a speculation because there's more fees that you have to pay into because it seems to, because it always seems to happen when the city buys uh, a public utility. Okay, anyways, like many other public utilities, it's understaffed and underfunded. The city of Missoula hopes to make this transition smooth and to work best with everybody. And like he said, that um, I can think of a, you know like Pacific Steel Recycling. They're not own, own, technically owned by the city. Um, that they have short hours, and then of course on the weekend, and they have normal hours during the week. They they've been working this and do this kind of thing. It's where you can take your uh, recycled material there, and you can actually get money from your recycled aluminum cans and stuff. So if you guys are out during the weekend partying, um, crushing some beer cans. You can always take it to Pacific Steel and earn probably like five bucks per like a hundred cans of beer. So, you know, five bucks, you know, new six pack or whatever. Anyways, um, so the new Echo Compost will continue to uh, Echo, will not continue the Echo Bag Buy. So you, the Echo Bag Buy is basically when you can go to the Echo Compost and be like, hey, I want some um, basic fertilizer to help grow for like small compost for gardens and stuff like that. Um, and many people like this about this, and this is um, John um, 
John Wilson ex explained why he, they're not going to continue this um, popular uh, composting. For moving away from it is it's not as profitable. Sure. It's not, it's no, not, I, not, not as much uh, you know return on the effort. Sure, I understand that, but I, I hope as we go forward, we can just kind of have a um, awareness that that would be great if that business did start up, and we would like to work with that business if it became a thing. All right, so um, that was Marilyn Marler. Uh, she is um, filling in for John Agin as he is out. Um, she's filling in for the mayor. So anyways, um, the next one is, this is Brian Von Lochsberg, and he is definitely in support of maybe having an extra organization that actually um, um, works with Echo Compost and also works with providing the compost for people to, for their gardens. Um, I mainly wanted to just express my support for moving forward in this fashion. I think um, I was glad that John, when he made the motion, explicitly mentioned, um, especially with the recent history of getting numbers wrong um, in the press, uh, the, the indeed the motion is that. Um, Hundred and some odd thousand dollar, not the one posted in Sire currently. Um, I think the big difference between the discussion we had last week and this one, this is a really, you know, prudent, um, cost-effective, uh, deliberate sort of step forward. And I think it, it certainly addresses for me what I was feeling a bit, and I think others on the committee were feeling in terms of the scope of what we were looking to approve last time. So I appreciate you coming back with this sort of revise. I think we st still sets the stage for us to get where we need to get, but it feels like a more prudent path forward to get there. So, uh, All right, so that was Brian Von Lossberg, and he was, um, as, he, as you heard, he was supportive of the course. The item was moved to the consent agenda. Business um, will be notified about the change of hours, um, and Jenny Miriam from the city will send out informational packets on how to uh, contact the new Echo Compost. But of course, um, if you want more information, you have to log on to ci.missoula.mt.us to find out more information about this and many of the other meetings. But of course, Wednesday's meetings were pretty slow. There weren't too many meetings. They were pretty much out by noon with all the meetings. So there's that's basically, it was a nice short meeting, but I think this one really emphasized what's happening with the echo compost, which is gonna be run by the city through the wastewater treatment plant. Because it's it's interesting because uh, a lot of the duties from the wastewater treatment plant, since they're so close, a lot of people are kind of slowly kind of monitoring the echo mm -hmm. compost, but of course they'll be kind of like rejuvenating all that stuff. And of course, people who already work at echo compost will ha have the opportunity to keep working at echo compost. It, but also, since it's going to be run through the city, they're going to have a little. They're going to have um, government like employee status benefits and all that stuff. Mm, nice, nice. Which is probably why uh, it'd be more expensive yeah. if they kept things running as they are. Mm -hmm. So yep. of course, uh, just check it out. Um, there are a lot of places around town, especially during the uh, summer. So I think that the probably the best uh, solution for Echo Compost would be to um, during the winter they can probably have limited hours, but then during like pruning and branch and cutting season, they could open up for more hours so they can adjust to that kind of inflation of um, raw materials that get produced. But of course we do have, it is Friday and we have a flagship Friday video of the week starring the kids from um, Hellgate High School. But of course, you know, I have a bunch of videos from Washington Middle School, but I'm making the Washington Middle School edit their own darn videos. So we'll see more of that in the next coming weeks for flagship Friday. And when we come back, we'll say our final goodbyes. What are you doing, nerd? Well, I'm just watching Historic Preservation Commission. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you watching that garbage? Yo, 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 what's up? 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 What's going on? Quit being weird. Quit being boring. Quit being weird. <laughs> Quit being boring. I'm out. Are you following me? <laughs> Let's, Let's watch some National battle. Geographic. Both of those things are like on complete opposite sides of the spectrum. I don't think I want any part of that.
then they attacked. Well, well, well. As your newly appointed therapist, I've taken a little more modern approach to this. Whoa, 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 what, what happened to Dr. Neal? Well, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He's dead? No, no, he's just not with this firm anymore. Really? That's how he died? But I want to make it clear as mud, he is not dead. You should choose your words more carefully. Mud's not that clear. Did you have any other incidents? Well, there was this one little scrub, Owen. I'm so thirsty, like, mad thirsty. Thank God there's one more cup. Nee, Squidward. Jesus Christ, you stole my cup. Nee, Squidward. Did you just, eh, Squidward, me? Nobody. Yeah, Squidward's me. I didn't do it for you. I did it for the fans. Um, he broke the fourth wall. He, it, was, it was just terrible. He even did a thumbs up. By acknowledging that he broke the fourth wall, you just did. Wow. You're a great therapist. Wait a minute. Dr. Neil. Wait, what happened to that other therapist? Oh, right over there. Please, sir, sit back down. We're trying to help you, but it's a team effort. Besides, they couldn't fire me if they tried. I got tenure. Therapists get tenure? I did. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Well, this one time, I went to a different therapist's office. I'm contractually obligated to tell you that I charge by the flashback. Okay, then I won't, uh, I guess I just won't tell you about it. Oh, hey, Dr. Neal. Oh, hey, how you doing? Uh, well... I just want to thank you because after your therapy, oh, you it, say... uh, let me stop you right there. You already owe me five bucks, and I have to charge you for talking to me. I only have ten. What's up? Hey, welcome back. That was the Flagship Friday video of the week. And of course, if you want to find out more about your Flagship Friday videos and more, you can log on to wickedmissoula.wixsite.com slash wickedmissoula. So nice, we still are always going to make you write it out, all that crap <laughs> and all that stuff. But of course, here's a more recent Flagship Friday video. We have Wake Up Sports, we have past interviews, and we have our stop animation of the week as well that will continue on until the next time we see you guys, but of course you can always like us on our Facebook, you can follow us at Twitter, at Wake Up Missoula. MCAT also has a Twitter page, you guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page and to find out more information about us or watch us online live, go to MCAT.org. But of course it is the last four minutes, uh, it's the last four minutes 
of yours yes. on the Wicca Missoula show. So, so tell people um, what you plan to do when you move to Okay, Belgium. so what I plan, so I'm moving at the end of November and I'll be out of Missoula on December 1st. And so I applied for a weekend reporting job with KBZK. They haven't gotten back to me yet, but I also got a job at the front desk in a lodge in Big Sky. Cool. So for now, I'll be working at a front desk of a lodge in Big Sky, hopefully be getting a re weekend reporting job. So if I do, I'll let you guys all know about that and post it on Wake Up Missoula. Um, but thank you very much for tuning in with us, you guys. These past two and a half years on Wake Up Missoula has been quite a treat and it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I can't thank MCAT more for the opportunities. Yeah, I can't help remember uh, um, when we first started off in, um, for wake, uh, in wake Up Missoula. Where it was like originally <laughs> so it was between me and uh, Joel and Josh, Josh uh -huh. Minnie. We were all just kind of hanging out there. <laughs> and then Joel's like, you got to get a woman. You got to get a woman. You can't be just all just testosterone all over yep. this place. <laughs> so I was basically in the right place at the right time. And, and then uh, we started the show, uh -huh. and we were kind of like located uh, interesting ways uh -huh. for the first couple weeks, and then it, it made more sense to have Noel in the middle, yep. and then me and Josh on either side. Yep. And then after a while, Josh got like less and less, um, uh, he, he moved on to Bismarck, mm -hmm. North Dakota, and mm -hmm. now he's now in Great Falls yeah. as a reporter. For KRT. Um, this is probably the only time we've actually talked about Josh. Maybe. Yeah. We never, like, once he left, we were just like, who's we Josh who? We, <laughs> we talked to him about him a few times, but Josh has been doing, was really successful in North Dakota, and now he's got a two-year contract in Great Falls with one of their yeah. news reporting stations. So he's doing great, and we're all doing great here. And it's the end of an era, but now yes. Scott's got a new show. Yes, it's going to be Wake Up Missoula, but with just me. Cool, and then it's gonna be like a rolling clips, and I'll be showing a whole bunch of new programming on MCAT, of, all about MCAT. Uh, will you still be all doing about interviews? Missoula. Interviews, oh yeah, of course. So he'll uh, still be doing interviews. Uh, uh, Missoula Agent Service will be on on the very first show of my revamp show. I'll be doing all sorts of things. I'll do movie reviews with myself. Talk about <laughs> movies that are coming out that weekend, and it's and, basically but, just me being grumpy and just b basically spoiling the whole movie. It's just like, oh, uh, Amy Adams, and then you know she's gonna fall in love. <laughs> it'll be it'll be Wednesdays and Fridays only, though. Not no longer Mondays. Yes, right? Mondays we're gonna get rid of Mondays. Um, we're just gonna kind of see how it works out in December, and then there's gonna be a completely an utter revamp happening for your uh, new year for wow. 2017. That'll be most interesting to see that. Yeah. yeah. Tune in. I'll try to be as entertaining as possible, big fan, but no promises. Well, I wanted to say real quick, Scott, do you remember this outfit? This is the very first outfit I wore when I first met you guys. Aww. Well, I love it too because Asaph is wearing all green and then I'm wearing all red. Yeah. So it's kind of like. Christmas, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't plan that though. <laughs> we just love colors. Oh, I wanted to say also, I'm applying for ABC for musical notes. I've submitted my info and they sent my name out statewide to awesome. see if ABC will hire me too. Great. To That's awesome, notes. Lisa. Thanks to you. I hope they do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much, you guys, for tuning in with us over the past two and a half years. Thank you to everyone that has been on our show. Thank you to everyone that has watched it. Thank you, yeah, to MCAT. And be sure, we'll take a next week off, but be sure to catch Scott at the beginning of December. All right. Yeah. So for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ram. Here's ASAP Battle Nye. Mm -hmm.